after yet another busy week. On Friday, President Trump announced a short-term funding bill that would reopen the government through February 15th. And he promised to make sure workers who have gone unpaid for weeks will receive income as soon as possible. Joining us this morning, U.S. Representative Lance Gooden representing District 5, which stretches across Dallas, Henderson, and Kaufman counties. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. You, you know, the president has signed or said that he will sign the short term deal. Let's talk a little bit, though, about the workers yeah, and their the, struggles. The workers have struggled in my district. We've got a sizable population of federal employees, and I have been sick at my stomach for them and the plight that they've endured over these 30 plus days. I'm not I've uh, made arrangements and sent a letter to Congress asking not to be paid in solidarity solidarity with them. Uh, but the workers should have never been a pawn in all this, and it's very disappointing. It's a national embarrassment to have our government shut down. Um, it's also uh, a really sad state of affairs that our Congress is in, that people can't come to the table and agree. And for you, you're a freshman, and ever since you've been there, the government has been shut down. 100% of the time of my career in Congress, all three weeks of it, have been during a government shutdown. So, you know, a lot of us, we ran on solving problems and I can't apologize or make excuses for the Congress before me that really helped us get to this point. But we're moving forward, trying to uh, make sure that we do, do the business of the people and get this back in order. Well, let's get down to the root cause of this, right? The debate, over the wall. Sure. Where do you, oh, is there a path forward? Where do you stand? Do, do you support, first of all, what do you think Trump envisions when he says we should build a wall? And do you support that? Well, I've seen kind of an evolving position of what this wall means. Um, at one point, folks were wrongly saying that the president is pushing for this ridiculous wall from Galveston to San Diego. Uh, that's, or maybe South Texas, excuse my geography lesson there, to San Diego that's not necessary. The president has said we want 244, give or take, miles of wall. He's not saying we need it everywhere, but he's saying that's a part of serious border security that we need to ensure that our nation is safe. I believe that... And how, how would the wall look? I mean, what would it, would it be a real... It, how, it would be something functional that ensures that our border is protected. I'm not a border security wall expert, um, but... I defer to the experts, and the experts in Washington in Homeland say that we do need a physical barrier in some parts of the border. In other parts, we have mountains and water, and that's not necessary. My district is 100% on board with real meaningful border security, including a wall, and we stand with the president with respect to ensuring we have tough so, security. So the Democratic Speaker and the Democrats who control the House, mm -hmm. Nancy, they do not share the president's view on this. They, do, do you they feel, don't, surprisingly. Okay, so do you feel like shutting down the government because this is just a temporary fix, is worth it, worth what, what you just outlined. So, I mean, do you think the president is right and Republicans who, who, who support him, do you think it's worth shutting down the government to get this barrier? I think it's too early to tell because we don't have the barrier yet. Uh, my constituents aren't happy yet. We're not satisfied uh, with the end result. Uh, ask me in a few weeks, hopefully less than that, and hopefully I'll be able to say more, uh, but right now, I think the latest developments show that the president is willing to compromise before this weekend. While everyone likes to blame the, blame the president for this shutdown, Democrats wouldn't even speak to the president about this. There are freshman groups of Democrats that were invited to the White House. They were told by Nancy Pelosi not to even go. So to say that this is the president's shutdown when Democrats won't even talk to him is disingenuous. Well, I do have to say that the president himself said that he would own the shutdown. And he has owned that. but. As we've progressed, you have heard this outcry saying, let's end the shutdown. The folks crying on the left have refused to even visit with him. So it's difficult to say we're going to come together and negotiate on a wall. It's difficult for them to say, open the government, uh, we'll negotiate once things are back open. It's difficult for any of us to believe the Democrats when they won't even go to the White House and have lunch with the man. Are you willing to uh, entertain uh, compromises uh, that deals with, with DACA? And, and the, you know, the, the folks that are here through no fault of their own sure. are, 
to quote what would that look like? To quote some of the freshman Democrats who have been afraid to to speak on this, but recently they have said things afraid. like everything. Sure, absolutely. They're afraid to even go to the White House and have lunch with the president because Nancy Pelosi uh, won't allow them to. We as freshman Republicans set up a meeting with some of the freshman Democrats who a week ago said we've got to have a solution. They asked us specifically, do not tell anyone about this meeting because leadership will be all over us if we do it. And this is, I, I guess this is typical Washington. I've only been there for three weeks. A compromise uh, is something when both sides come together and talk. Both sides have not come together before but this are weekend. Are you willing for the dreamer, the so-called dreamers, to? I'm willing to have anything on the table if it, if the end result is meaningful border security and solutions to problems that people in Congressional District 5 has, have asked for for years. We haven't seen any solutions because we haven't been able to compromise and get both sides to the table. Switching, uh, switching topics real quick, you have been named to the Financial Services Committee. I know that was something that was important to you. Talk about what you hope to do on that committee. You know, Jeb Henserling, who was my predecessor, was chair of House Financial Services for many years. So it's a big win for the Dallas area and nor all of North Texas and Texas, for that matter, uh, to have a seat on financial services. It's a powerful committee. Maxine Waters is the new chair because the Democrats are in the majority. So you'll probably see a lot of partisan fights. Uh, we've already heard from a lot of folks. Uh, including the chairwoman, that their intention is to have investigations. We're going to um, call members of the administration before the committee. So my hope is that we can get something meaningful done. My fear is that we'll spend the next six months to two years uh, with witch hunts and uh, hearings that aren't meaningful to the American people that Speak are all political. Speaking of hearings, uh, you're a freshman. Uh, what's your view on, of the Mueller investigation and your reaction to Trump confidant, Trump friend Roger Stone being arrested last week? You know, I've read the indictment for him. None of what I read uh, had anything to do with the president. So I think, uh, as Sarah Sanders said on Friday, um, this is a Roger Stone issue. This is not a president issue. But I do believe we should step back as members of Congress, let the investigation uh, go f go forward and move through appropriate channels, but it also needs to wrap up. We've been hearing about this investigation for quite some time. It's my hope that it will wrap up and we can move on as a country. Are you concerned with anything that you've heard so far related to the mother investigation, related to the president, Russia, anything? I haven't seen area? any hard evidence uh, that the president colluded with Russia, and I've been open-minded and willing to let the uh, investigation work its course, and I hope that it will wrap up soon and we can finally put this to bed for the American people. Representative Gooden, thank you so much for being with us this morning and thank still you. ahead.